be disappointed about you that yeah. you are national fan. <laughs> <laughs> how, do you, how, how do you know? How do you know? Because some people don't know which I'm team I support. Okay. <laughs> as, as a reporter, yeah. if you know who is your national fan, how do you feel as a reporter? As a sports reporter, how would you feel? Get into uh, maybe uh, to tell these stories, you know, when it comes to sports events mm. and all that. I mean, how has it changed your life as mm. a person? Um, well, to start with, I think it's the best job in the world because we are paid to talk about something we enjoy. Because I sit there and watch my sport, and then the following morning I'm supposed to talk about what I watched the previous night. So it's a, it's a good job. Uh, but again, how it has impacted, uh, well, of course, sport is now the biggest. Uh, it's, it's, if you look at the statistics, uh, the most consumed news are either on social media or online, it's sports. Uh, so it means uh, that uh, sports has been making the strides. And of course, for sports to make the strides, it's us, uh, the people people that take it out there to the public that make it make those strides so it's kind of fulfilling uh, to know that something they are, you're deeply involved in is actually getting there so um, I don't want to miss any detail with mm. you. Mm. you you put on a shirt that says straight out of district mm. and I've seen on your Twitter uh, still you use district uh, what is it all about um, well for the people who follow me on social media they know that I'm the kind of person that always looks at the lighter side of almost everything I always try to. I, I, I don't. I always try to look for the lighter side. Uh, so um, th this uh, came up uh, some good years ago. I think like eight or eight years or something. Uh, I, I think I I pulled pulled out one of my biggest jokes on social media. Uh, it went viral, and it was about districts. Unfortunately, I don't remember <laughs> what it, uh, uh, the exact phrasing of what I put out there. But it went viral over the internet. So all of a sudden, uh, people started calling me district. District. district district so I took it up and now almost everyone You're some people actually it. some people actually don't don't call me by name they call me district yeah. and it's it's grown it's a brand that I'm growing uh, the t-shirts and uh, so many other things that are on the way yeah so that's how the, game, the name came about congratulations thank you I mean yeah. you won an yeah. election that mm -hmm. uh, that that moved strides that mm -hmm. almost had the majority mm -hmm. which is how has it mm -hmm. been running that office of I mean for this couple of months uh, well I've, I've been in the office uh, for what four five months now um, of course it's tough uh, serving people is tough because uh, I mean and the way I came into office because in the history of USPA, uh, the Uganda Sports Press Association this association has been in existence since 1970 but this was the most publicized election yeah. everyone uh, everyone in Uganda got to know about it I mean the day I won the election you would think that maybe it was because uh, all, all the media channels were breaking news uh, but uh, and some people were hearing about USPA for the first time so it was a very publicized uh, I mean election uh, maybe because of the personality that I am uh, but of course that comes with a burden huge burden of expectations because people expect so much from you so uh, all these months I've been working so hard because I don't want to headlines mm, called you mm. a born leader yeah. Why did, oh, that attribute of leadership, yeah. where did it come from? Um, well, I, 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 before becoming president, I was serving in the association. I, yeah, I, I first served as assistant general secretary, then I, I served for two terms as the general secretary. Yeah. Uh, interestingly, I, I hadn't been in a leadership position before that, because throughout my school life, I was never a prefect or anything like that. But, but the, the, the leadership that I've been part of, like when there's something that needs to be done, maybe at the workplace or at home in a family I always take the lead if they say well I think we need to do this so I always come out and say yeah we should do this let me take the lead so I've been that kind of person until I got into serious leadership positions and well who knows where I might go from here yeah mm. of course now if you're not in office mm. we assume you're a parent somewhere mm. and you've been a great fantastic father mm. have you seen any of um, have you looked carefully to see if the talent is being passed along oh, oh yeah Oh yeah, um, I'm a, prou a proud father uh, of four, um, with my wife Lucky. 
and uh, well, I have my our last born. His uh, his three will be making four in May. Um, uh, that guy is everything me. Is um, he interested in? Uh, yes, I, I mean apart, tell me uh, apart, apart from the looks, and, and unfortunately he tells me he likes Liverpool. I I, I don't know where he got that from, but there he tells go, me he likes. <laughs> he tells me he likes. But but mm. that boy sometimes the things he says uh, really amaze me because uh, at home I watch a lot of sport, and this boy, for example, knows which channel has which game at that age uh, yes he knows which channel has uh, you, you tell him he's called Amil tell him Amil I want to watch cricket he will get the remote not flip through all the channels he will press straight to that channel tell him I want to watch tennis I want to watch La Liga even the football he knows which 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 is on which channel and he knows the names he's a very big fan of Messi uh, I don't know why but he he's, he actually calls himself Messi uh, sometime back he had uh, we had a big a big problem at school he was yeah. crying that the teacher was refusing to call him Messi because yeah. uh, I mean he's a big fan of Messi uh, interestingly he also likes Cristiano and Ronaldo uh, yes he plays he, he loves football he loves football a lot um, when you go to a supermarket or anywhere the first thing he picks is a ball he has like 20 soccer balls at home I don't know where that love go, uh, where he got it from because I don't play football at home uh, but I, I mean I think that's something that is inborn because I was exactly like that when I was was growing up I was crazy about sport from a very tender age I uh, would play football till it, it got dark uh, I played volleyball a whole lot uh, so I mean it's, as a parent it, uh, deep down I'm happy to see that uh, he's exactly me most of the things that he does so now we have a fancy mm. meal assembled here before you mm. some uh, fish fillet crispy fish fillet mm. looks nice Rice. Mm. Uh, do you mind taking a bite of this? Okay. Uh, you know, uh, of course, I wouldn't. Think it's just a pro. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't because <laughs> it, it, it looks really tasty. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Some dania sauce. That's okay. dania sauce, by the way. Oh, okay. Yeah. Take a bite. Mm. Are well, you the one who made it? Uh, no, 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 no. I made it with the help of our incredible chef extraordinaire. That's mm. Maren. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so now uh, we, as we go on, mm. uh, I would love to inform you that uh, we are going to be having a mouthful interview with this gentleman. Such a beginning, but I, I can tell you that I've almost picked it and everything that he's saying. Now, on this show, we always want to bring celebrities that can tell you about their childhood stories. By the way, that's mm. the section we are going to tackle next. So stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. This is Chilling on UBC TV. I'm Drago. If you're still here with me watching Chilling on UBC TV, you deserve an award. Probably you can get a cookie. <laughs> Thank you very much for staying with me. Uh, before I introduce to you a man who is the president of Whisper and is doing a great job because a lot of change has been noticed there. But now I want, I'd love to find out about his life growing up, which kind of uh, child was he? Was actually sports one of his interests or it just, how did it come to even fall on his lap? Mm. So, which kind of family do you come from? Uh, well, I come from a, a modest family um, of four, one girl and three boys. Um, my, my, my brothers are both teachers, actually one is a head teacher and uh, my, my sister did accounting. I'm the last born from the family. You also did a commerce course? Yes, I did. I did become a university, yeah. but it's something, you know, th there are those things that you do for family because they expect you to, to be studying something. But me, from senior one, I knew I, wa I was going to be a sports journalist. I wanted, okay, I, I started with the admiration for radio uh, before I zeroed in on sports journalism. But by senior four, I'd already made up my mind that I wanted to be, to be a sports journalist. Now, for the sake of my family, of course, uh, like the career guidance, they wanted me to go that way. Because, uh, I mean, accounting is something that you can do, you're sure you're short of a job and things like that but I wanted to follow my passion so I'm the last born in that family um, growing up well I, I actually grew up in Masaka I know some most people might not know that and many wonder how a Kanyomos grew up in Masaka um, our family initially was in Entebbe but my dad was transferred to Masaka way before I was born to Masaka hospital uh, so I think he fell in love with the place and uh, it, 
it became our permanent home up to now. That's where my dad what stays. Did you feel growing up from that? Uh, well, uh, unlike unlike my elder brothers and sisters who had experienced life outside Masaka, me I didn't because I, I was born there. So uh, it, for me it was okay. Of course uh, they draw comparisons between the, this and the other, but. It's, it's a nice place. I, I actually love it. I, I really love it. And so that's where I, I grew up. I went to school there. Yeah. All my primary and secondary school was there. I went to Masaka Baptist Primary School. I went to Masakesis and I also went to Kasasa uh, for my A-levels. So that, that's how so it was. So if you're saying you're a last born, why mm. you stumble? Uh, <laughs> Please be honest. I'm uh, yeah, to, must yeah to, be, to be honest, I was. <laughs> yeah. I was. I, but but I, I, Interestingly, as I grew older, I became more humble. Uh, but, but, but I was, I was very, very, very stubborn. So I'm, I'm trying to mm. draw a correlation mm. between you studying mm. from Makerere. Did mm. you study from Makerere? Yes, yes. How did you come to get to town, mm. to Kampala? But, but of course, you know, in, in whichever part of the country you are, the ultimate university is Makerere. So, uh, did, so did you study your secondary from Kampala? Uh, no, 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 no. It was also in Masaka. Uh, so I, I, I came to do university and d during university uh, no uh, actually the, the other part that I've not told you before we even get to university in my senior six vacation I got my first job at a radio station in Masaka uh, because a, a friend of mine told me that there might be an opening at that radio station so uh, what I did I told them uh, I, I said to myself I want to read news on radio I had never done it so what I did I got a newspaper called my brother and my sister and, and told them I, I want to read for you so you tell me how I sound as so I read for them and they tell me you actually sound good so the following day I went to the radio station I, I did a voice test that very day and after they told me to wait for like an hour after that one hour they told me tomorrow come and work so i i don't know i don't know because because uh, by that time radio was really big it was not like now when, when there are so many radio stations that it's no longer it's such a big deal so now, K, so, mm, K, capital FM, uh, you started working no 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 um uh, 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 that was in masaka then i moved to kfm uh, that was uh, uh, that was around 2007 i'd actually even finished university so, uh, so you've worked for KFM mm, since that time yeah yeah, yeah. Um, I'm a very loyal employee. You glorified. <laughs> yeah, You're I've been glorified. at KFM for a very long time. I'm actually yeah. thinking of retiring. Yeah. yeah. You know, I mm. had uh, happened to have your your wife on mm. the show before. Yeah. And uh, she 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 told me something very interesting about mm. journalism mm. and the way how the whole surface of journalism is changing, mm. especially with the uh, rise of social media mm. and uh, you know apps and uh, YouTube and mm. everything that. Now, mainstream broadcast mm. is that not much important. Mm. Yeah, Somebody but can even create their own mm. podcast. Mm. You know what a podcast? Yeah, I do. And podcasts are very are very common in sport. Um, actually, for more developed countries like the UK, you have they are celebrated uh, journalists who do podcasts that they are actually bigger than the guys who are on radio. Um, new media, as it is called, is the way to go. Because the uh, truth is, traditional media is slowly dying, it's, it's slowly being overtaken by new media. Uh, so for every journalist to remain relevant uh, for the coming years, uh, the, 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 you need to embrace a new media. If you're still on traditional media channels, uh, utilize that time to get onto new media, social media, uh, all the other channels that are available, because that's the way to go and that's where the money is. So what sort of influences do you have mm. that to your decision to mm. join journalism? Mm. Um, I, I used to listen to radio a lot. Um, I had a, I had a Is there somebody in particular? Uh, uh, you, uh, you, uh, uh, oh, oh my, I, I was crazy about Rasta Room. I was, I was a very young boy, but, but I, I, I wouldn't miss any of his shows. I had a very small radio that my brother brought for me from France. I really loved it. It was one of my most prized assets. And I would listen to radio most of the time uh, uh, wh when I was not in school all the time I was listening to radio and I knew I would end up on radio I did everything I could to join radio because it was something that I'd hoped from a very very tender age mm. Mm. with such a person with such a busy schedule you mm. have to mm. be on TV you mm. have to still be on radio mm. on a daily basis yes I mean how have you how do you cope up with such pressure mm. um, well it's it's, it's 
very hard. Uh, let me tell you the truth. It's very hard because uh, I wake up very early in the morning. I'm supposed to be on radio at 7:40, so that means I have to be there by seven. Now I have to be on radio. Uh, and, and I have to do TV in the evening, so uh, th that's uh, th the whole day. Uh, it's it's basically fixed because from radio I have to run to TV, which is quite a distance. So by the time I drive from Namuongo to Naguru, it, it's really hectic. So by the time the day is done, uh, then you're wasted. But the good thing is uh, that I'm, I'm, I have some free days in in between because uh, Friday is my day off. Then Saturday I work for only two hours. Uh, then I don't work on Sunday, so I have enough time uh, to, to, to relax, but also to spend with my family. Okay. Yeah. So now this is more of a serious question, mm. especially to do with your capacity mm. as the president. Mm. What do you think can be done to mm. improve the working, mm. the working uh, conditions mm. for maybe sports journalists mm. outside here, mm. especially here in Uganda? Because mm. mm. um, you know, when it comes to rights mm. as journalists. Mm. It's it's a little bit still, mm. uh, uh, it's story, some stories are still unknown yeah. when it comes to Uganda. Mm. What do you think can mm. be done better? Mm. Um, well, it's a, it's a it's a bit complex uh, what what needs to be done because uh, from from an individual as a journalist, I, I want I obviously want a bit better pay, uh, but again when you look at it from the side of the media house owners, uh, they, they don't make as much money. Uh, but but um, the, the tricky bit is how do we synchronize that because uh, the journalists uh, they, they don't we don't work in the best of conditions and everyone I think knows the journalism is not a, a good paying job most of the guys in the profession do it uh, for, for passion so you have to be extra innovative to be able to live a good life a good and comfortable life in journalism so to start with what needs to be done is for media houses and I'll, I'll speak for the sports journalists because those are the people i represent one they need to appreciate sport because uh, right now sport is the biggest seller trust me um, they need to appreciate it and remunerate the sports journalists better remunerate them better if there are targets that need to be set to them set those targets but make sure that they work in the best conditions of, of course it goes back uh, the media houses will need to make money uh, so how do you make money and th that the onus then is on the money media house managers uh, to make money but make the working conditions for the journalists more favorable because right now they are not so story. on a personal level mm. social media is more of a bittersweet experience mm. or a bittersweet uh, thing for us mm. or i mean there's a, some hate mm. there's some love mm. with you mm. how have you cope up with that because i'm sure mm. the pressure that comes mm. from being a president mm. you might have some people disagreeing yeah, upon your yeah. policies or mm. most of them are growing mm. how have you cope up with uh, uh, the negativity? Uh, uh, well, for social media, you have to accept that there has to be negativity because you're dealing with all sorts of people. And uh, me, I, I don't, I don't get bitter when, when say I post something and a person, a person responds uh, with negativity or with hate or anything. Because uh, me, uh, that, that, that's me. Uh, if you give me hate, I don't return the favor. I'll, I'll give you an example of the, my my first encounter with racism. I was I was walking on uh, on the streets of Vienna, uh, Austria, and then I found a, a group of teenagers. Uh, there were I think four or five. So when I passed them, they started making monkey chants behind my back. Yeah. So what I I turned, looked at them, and gave them the widest smile I could. So for me, the message was: I mean, hate doesn't have to be countered with hate all the time. Um, uh, there were two messages I was communicating. One, I'm proud to be black, but also, uh, if you give me hate, I'll give you, I'll give you love instead, and that's how the world should be. So you expect negativity. Uh, but if you respond to negativity with negativity, uh, then you're not helping matters. So me, if it's too much, I ignore, and most of the times I do that. Um, or I respond in a cheeky way. You attack me, I, I have my own way of dealing with people who come with negativity. And at the end of it, we all remain happy. Otherwise, you'll get stressed and over social media. That annoys when you try to offend somebody. Yes, uh, and I do that a lot. You, you, you try to offend, of course I can clearly tell that you're trying to offend me then I'll make fun out of it. Okay, this is the last part. Let's mm. play a game. Uh -huh. this, this game is called If You Only yeah. Knew. Yeah. If You Only Knew. Mm -hmm. Funniest fun encounter. Funniest? Fun encounter. Yeah. 
what has been your funniest co fun encounter? Um, I, I honestly don't remember because I've encountered many along the way. Uh, but I think there's, I don't know if, if she was serious, there's one who wanted uh, me to give an autograph on the book. Uh, I don't know if there was it, but I, 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 I didn't find it offensive, I found that funny. I mean, how would anyone come up with something like that? Okay. Hmm. Place, you would, uh, place we would find you if you're near Dale. Home. Home. Hmm. Best piece of advice you ever got? Um, w when you're doing good to someone, don't expect anything in return. Okay. Worst piece of advice you've ever got? Um, uh, worst piece of advice? Uh, I honestly don't remember. Me, I can tell you. Uh, 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 worst piece of advice? Somebody like, told like, me. Uh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Somebody told me that maturity is mm -hmm. a thing, mm -hmm. and I happen to disagree with that because mm -hmm. you know we are all constantly growing. Even you mm -hmm. at such a tender age, mm -hmm. your father, children, mm -hmm. but still you're also learning in the process. You see mm -hmm. how kids deal, with, how to deal with kids, and mm -hmm. how to deal with that experience and all that. So maturity is really not a thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so you are saying, do you have any? Um, the, I, I think the worst advice was. Uh, was uh, but don't don't. Uh, there should there's a certain age at which you should get married, because yeah. uh, I, I I got married there at a, at a much much younger age, yeah. and I thought uh, uh, that that's wrong advice. Yeah. Uh, the moment you're into it, yeah. uh, the age at which you get into it doesn't matter. Okay, mm. person you would love to switch places with a day. A day. Mm. Just for uh, a day. The, um, <laughs> who would that be? Uh, <laughs> I, I, have, uh, I have a feeling you uh, it would it would suit you if you switched place with uh, Miss Lucky Babas. No 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 no. I wouldn't. Fitness and all that. I wouldn't. I wouldn't handle her lifestyle <laughs> even for for five really? hours. No, I, I wouldn't. Uh, there are things uh, that she does that I cannot do. Okay. Uh, but, but but maybe 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 Tiger Woods. Uh, yeah. And congratulations to him. It's yeah, bad. yeah, Me, yeah, yeah. Because uh, it's, it's been an incredible story for him. I can imagine wha what he's feeling uh, when everyone had written him off, and then he he, he shuts everyone up. And uh, um, yeah. Okay. Mm. Superpower you wish you had. Superpower. Um, I, 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 well, there's only one wish that I, I wish I could I could bring my mom back even if it was for one hour uh, yeah uh, so you wish you could have the powers to to to, to see my mom again even if it was for one hour because uh, when she died there there are things we hadn't talked about and i was planning to tell her about unfortunately she passed on before it so even if i could have her for even if it was five minutes biggest risk you've ever taken oh biggest risk i've ever taken uh, well, uh, your biggest risk I've ever taken. There's, I think, there's a harder trip. Uh, I, I, I think, I think I was going to China, uh, like three or four years ago, yeah. and all, all the m uh, the all the money I had, because I'd paid for the hotel here, and I had m my air ticket. I didn't have any other money on me, but I was committed on going and I look back and I'm like what was I thinking because I, I didn't have any other money on me because I knew w once I get there I'll be moved to the hotel and I didn't have any that was a big risk because it was what a foreign a country that, yeah and I'm thinking what if something had happened to me it was some long time ago. yeah and you're lucky you're mm. in China now <laughs> yeah. China now you can't even move without a pen yeah you have to be with a thousand dollars so second last something you could uh, live without uh, something I could something that you couldn't live without sorry. that I couldn't live without my phone your phone yeah okay um, uh, can you mozi in 10 years um, can you mozi in 10 years uh, retired from sports journalism and journalism doing my own business um, my own PR firm and a consultancy firm do you speak out politically Yes, I do. What do you think about the Bobby One phenomenon? Um, and what's trying to achieve? Well, I've, I've spoken out about Bobby One on so many occasions. Uh, but uh, the honest truth is, uh, I think everyone should be allowed to pursue their political ambitions. Um, let every, everyone be allowed to compete. And I think 
if they are competing within the laws of the land, let them be allowed to compete. And uh, for him, as a young man at 37, those are big dreams to be frustrated. And I don't think he has ill intentions for the country. Wow. Mm. What a star, what a celebrity mm. to host mm. such a calm man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he speaks with such intelligence. Mm -hmm. Thank you for being such a great audience. Please, I would love to thank each and everybody that's spent time to tune into the program. Now, uh, one last thing that I would want to uh, tell people about you, how mm. could they catch you mm. on radio? Catch him on KFM every single day from yeah. Monday to Friday. Mm. That's from 7? Yeah, I have, uh, have two updates in the morning, 7.40 and 8.40. And then also catch him on the other television. Kwesi. Kwesi. And you can, you can say that. Yeah, <laughs> but I'm, I spend more time on social media. <laughs> uh, so for, for What's the social media handle? Uh, uh, Twitter at Patrick Kanyomos. Yeah. Uh, Facebook, Patrick so Kanyomos District. Yeah. Thank you, Lois. Thank you, Esther. Thank you, each and everybody that has been with me at the field. This has been BMK Cafe. Thank you for the great location and for the incredible meal. I would also love to thank Kwanzi Classic for always finding me these incredible outfits. Until next time, we meet. Bye. Cheers. war conflict is now undergoing transformation through innovative development approaches of the government of Uganda. Thousands of households are progressing out of poverty through a pathway that includes market-driven enterprises, a growing culture of savings and investment, village revolving funds, employment provided by labor-intensive public works, communal block farming, and through mindset development training. The third Northern Uganda Social Action Fund, known as NUSAF 3, is a project under the office of the Prime Minister, is uplifting communities and changing lives. A documentary on NUSAF 3 is to be aired on UBC TV, inspiring Uganda. the 13th Kampala International Fix Festival 2019 from the 11th to 12th September at the Tower Cottages Hotel in Rubaga. Seven accolades are for grabs in the following categories. Documentary, Sport and Society, Olympic Spirit, Sports and Disability, Sports Movies, Sports Advert, TV and Weblog category and a special award for the APL Award. This will be given to an outstanding individual or institution that has served all contributed greatly in the world of sports broadcasting and cinema. For those interested in contesting, pick up and forms at UBC Broadcast House Nail Avenue or call 0780-791344 or 0782-258152. Deadline is on 4th September. The winners in each category will automatically qualify for the world final, the 37th Milano International Fix Fest 2019 in Italy, which attracts the best of the best global Join and let us celebrate culture through sports. Betacool works fast to relieve acidity, heartburn, and indigestion. Trust Betacool. Enjoy life. If symptoms persist, seek medical advice. Tuesday, the 10th day of September 2019. Hello there and welcome to News Tonight. Thank you so much for having chosen UBC TV as your channel of choice. First though, let's have a look at our top stories. 
In our news tonight, government lifts ban on sugarcane export to Kenya. Members of parliament blocked from accessing its alleged illegal detention centers. Also in the world, a parliament suspension begins as Johnson's election bid fails. And in sports, FUBA sets playoffs. Hello there and welcome once again on Saying Language. It is Mugalu Mohammed and I am Edward Ukidi Kijinangoma. President Yoweri Kogta Museveni has said that government of Uganda has lifted the ban on the export of raw sugarcane to Kenya for a period of only three months effective next week. Now the decision was reached during a meeting chaired by President Museveni at State House in Tebe that brought together sugar millers and sugarcane farmers from Busoga sub-region. Now the move, he said, aims at allowing Ugandan farmers sell surplus sugarcane that is not consumed locally. Let's get more on that in the following report. Logically now, the wise thing also for not to have so, so much confusion is to, say, to, to, to agree that, that the mature cane, if it doesn't have a ready buyer among the, our factories here, then it should be exported. <laughs> The decision to export sugarcane was reached last evening during a meeting chaired by President Seveni at State House in Tebe that brought together sugar millers and sugarcane farmers from Busoga subregion. Ugandan farmers for the last few months have grown too much sugarcane resulting in a surplus supply on a local market in Uganda. The decision to lift the ban will see Uganda export raw sugarcane to allow Kenya-based factories that are willing to buy sugarcane from Uganda. The meeting emphasized and agreed that only mature sugarcane should be exported, adding that an agricultural officer should determine sugarcane maturity and its fitness for export. The agriculture officer is to determine the maturity of the cane. And uh, the second point, for export that to, to confirm to confirm yes the meeting also resolved that if a farmer had credit with a miller, the miller is obliged to buy all the mature sugarcane within the agreed contract period. If not, the miller should compensate the farmer for the loss. The giver of the credit is not ready to take the, 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 the cane within the 48 hours. Then let him go, he will pay you later. President Seveni directed that all bond warehouses should be banned with immediate effect in order to harmonize the price of sugar and root for the expansion and growth of the sugar industry. The president also asked sugar millers and farmers to work together, adding that the two players need each other in order to ensure the survival of the sugar industry. He, however, cautioned sugarcane farmers about the low returns from sugarcane production, saying that the ventures will not get them out of poverty, mostly those who have small pieces of land. He, therefore, called on them to diversify their production ventures and concentrate more on crops like coffee, poultry, piggery, and fish farming, among other enterprises that can yield good income for their home states. Trade, Industry and Cooperatives Minister Horrible Amelia Chambade said her ministry will allow Uganda sugarcane farmers to export excess sugarcane to Kenya for only three months. No reach of uh, my ministry. Tragen and Tugama and Katukulewe Mieze Satu. E Mieze Satu to Jiratu Tuara. Nengo Mna Kenya ya Gamba. Ntia Tusasule Mtuaro, Kuminetano, Bulimetric Tan. She revealed that her ministry is doing all that is possible to secure licenses for farmers to sell their raw sugarcane to avert 
incurring losses. She strongly advised sugarcane farmers to form a consortium in transportation of their sugarcane to ensure realization of tangible benefits. President Museveni and his counterpart Uhuru Kenyatta of Kenya met on the sidelines of the 8th TCAT conference in Japan last month and discussed issues relating to the sugar business in their neighboring countries. Meanwhile, uh, government has realized a drop on commitment fees charged on borrowed funds from 26.5 million US dollars to about 4.6 million dollars. Although delayed disbursement of loans has affected timely completion of planned projects. Now this has affected the outcome and output level of performance across most government sectors to near dismal or average. However, this has not affected Minister of Defense, whose performance remains at over 100%, and road construction sector, whose performance is according to plan, as we hear in this story. So we've got four, the miners will have four capacity. Use, use the quickly, and if necessary, use the even before time. Ministers and technical heads of government ministries, departments, and agencies have been tasked to energize coordination and monitoring of government program implementation across the board. This was during the opening of the 10th annual performance report retreat of government ministries and agencies, officiated by the Vice President Edward Chonoka Sekandi at the President's Office Towers in Kampala. This follows findings indicating a dismal outcome performance across 17 government sectors by one percentage point and reduction of 9% in performance across government departments. This is attributed to delayed financial source release and failure to complete projects in time due to delayed financing. You will often spend two days intensively scrutinizing the performance of various sectors while focusing on public finance investments, especially the externally funded projects level of performance in a, a alignment to the National Development Plan, so as to clearly inform the NDP3 preparation, the N NRM government manifesto, the sustainable development goals, the regional development frameworks, and other government development strategies. Premier Dr. Akana Rugunda, however, says funds absorption rate across government sectors and departments had largely improved, but advised line ministers, permanent secretaries, and other technical staff to strengthen their monitoring of program implementation. We pay penalties if we do not use the money that we have borrowed. And I'm glad that now the amount of money we are paying as penalties as a result of improved performance uh, has changed. We were paying 26.5 uh, million dollars as of June 2015, and now we are paying 4.6 uh, million dollars, a difference of 22 million dollars, but we it's an improvement, definitely. Premier Gonda reiterated government's resolve to fulfill sustainable development goals and to ensure national development plan strategies are met for national development. We need to strengthen coordination and monitoring during the implementation of the national development plan. This is an area that we must concretely address with renewed Figure and innovation. Implementation has to take the whole of government approach to avoid duplication that leads to wastage of time and wastage of resources. Kamoja Affairs Minister, Engineer John Jabagambi, said donor funds delays have affected completion of most public projects, in turn, affecting national economic performance, mainly in infrastructure sector. Ownership of projects by political and technical leadership. 
is a very, very big point. Whereby some of the MDAs have created ministries within ministries. They don't talk with the ministers, they think they are bound them, they do whatever they want to do without consulting their ministers. There is no coordination at all. You find that the minister is not owning the project. He doesn't know even how the project is moving on. And I see, whenever we are in the cabinet and the question is posed by the president, you see some of us running outside to bring the EPC. How is the project going? In other words, we are not There is limited follow-up, monetary and fast tracking of the project's performance by permanent secretaries. While giving an overview of government performance, the Minister of State for Karamoja Affairs, Moses Chizige, said the ease of doing business in Uganda had dropped from 122 to 127 out of 190 countries across the world. Chizige attributed this to lack of ease of accessing electricity, straining business, and dealing with construction habits. There is a tendency for decline for almost everything. Energy and development declined by well over 20 percent. ICT and national guidance, there was last been there before, and the performance was just 31 percent. Trans trade and industry, three percent decline. The Minister of Defense was rated the best performer, while the Minister of Works was credited for expansion of road infrastructure and recent attainment of two Bombardier aircrafts that have led to the revival of the aviation sector in the country. The annual performance review aims at refocusing government ministries and agencies on planned activities and outcomes, evaluate level sector contribution to improve livelihoods through effective utilization of capital development funding and adherence to the NRM manifesto. Haimana Deo reporting for BC News, Kampara. Enough for that report there. Now, members of parliament on the Human Rights Committee have been blocked from accessing illegal detention centers around Kampala. Uh, the members of the committee, led by the chairperson Jennifer Nantume Egunyu, were conducting a field visit following reports that the internal security organization is operating illegal detention houses. The Parliamentary Committee on Human Rights has been investigating alleged detention centers across the country. The investigation on alleged detention centers follows a matter presented to Parliament by Kawempe North Member of Parliament Latif Sewagala, requesting Parliament to intervene. To establish the authenticity of the allegations, the committee visited Chengera in a place said to be an illegal detention center. At Chengera, the committee found a tightly guarded enclosed residential house where members of parliament were turned away by one security personnel. I meet the big man. No. But we don't want to see the big man. Who is the big man? Hello, whom, whom, whom are we talking to? We are talking to Kalibala Vincent. Kalibala Vincent? What is your rank? In charge. In charge of what? This, these premises. Order to go to Nakasero, that's all. He told them to first seek permission from the director, Iso, Kano Kakaba Agenda. The order is to go to Nakasero. To meet who? To meet who? Afande, Afande, you're now speaking to the chairperson. Hello? Hello? No additional statement. We do oversight on spot visiting, and this is what we expected that maybe they would allow us to enter here. So as a committee now, we can go back and decide on what to do next. We know that you have summoned Director General Iso, uh, Iso uh, uh, Kaka Bajenda, and we know that he must attend tomorrow so that we can even add more questions as to why. At Nalukolongo, just by the roadside, was another alleged detention house guarded by UPDF and LDU, where the MPs were again turned away. <laughs> The same thing happened in Kaboa. Again, we've been denied entrance uh, by the people that are guarding um, the, the premises. They told us we must get clearance from the Minister of Security. In Nakasero, however, an identified commander of the place requested to meet only the committee chairperson inside the premises. Basically, he's calling us, he's calling me because he doesn't know why we've come, come here. 
tell you your request. If he allows others to come in, then they will come. The members of parliament, and that's what we're saying. And you, you, you already told me that before. I know, and I've already told you. But again, this, I mean, you're also operating under the law, so we expect you to be transparent and tell us come under. Auntie, we are transparent. If one person can't go, then what? This one is just giving those words to say. Okay. The committee chairperson in fear, however, declined to meet the commander. Yes. That you, we, 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 we either go as a That's committee why. or we don't go. Or we don't go. One of the two, but you mm. can't go alone. It is for your own good also. Mm. It is for I understand. Own, yeah. To sit as a committee and decide. That is not a, a one person's decision. We are going to sit as members and decide on what to do next. We will continue to investigate and will continue ensuring the human rights of Ugandans are protected. The committee, however, resolved to summon the director Isoka Kabajenda to give an explanation. Susan Naung and Gloria Gwitabinji reporting for UBC News. It's coming to 19 minutes after 8. We are now going to take a very short break, but we'll return with business news. Stay with us. Every dream has a challenging journey. Ours began in 1998 with a mission to drive the development of a robust communications sector in Uganda. We created structures to champion the dream. We've evolved, made discoveries, supported great minds, empowered Ugandans and fostered a vibrant culture enabling communication for all. Down the years, we've created memories and networks, uniting generations and building great partnerships. Together, we can go even further. UCC, celebrating 20 years of achievements. The Electoral Commission has released guidelines for countrywide reorganization of polling stations from 2nd to 14th September in preparation for 2020-2021 general elections to enable voters conveniently cast their votes. Every parish, ward, and electoral area must have at least one polling station. Where no polling station exists in a newly created parish or ward, at least one polling station must be recommended by the stakeholders in the area. The returning officer must ensure that each electoral area at sub-county level is demarcated and approved by the commission. Sub-county supervisors shall oversee the reorganization exercise. In case of parish, village, or electoral areas at sub-county without polling stations, meetings will take place at the mother parish where current polling stations are located. For details, call 0312-211-050. Announced by the Uganda Electoral Commission. Three, three, three. What's up with number three? It's three at Airtel and not four anymore. It's three shillings per second across all networks in Uganda. Make calls from Airtel to all networks at three shillings per second. Get to talk to anyone on any network anytime at three shillings per second. Ha <laughs> ha! Airtel, the smartphone network. Airtel is regulated by Uganda Communications Commission. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Pain Arena. Introducing on the right corner, Mr. Action, the reigning heavyweight champion in the ring against... Against the headache, the number one contender. And the bell rings. Headache charges forward with a steady right and the left hook. Action dojes. He misses out with an inch. Wait a minute. Mr. Action launches back with a kick. The final blow, he is out. If symptoms persist, seek medical advice. The Parliament of Uganda will host the 64th Commonwealth Parliamentary Conference from the 22nd to the 29th of September 2019 at the Munyonyo Commonwealth Resort. The conference provides an opportunity for parliaments to discuss best practices, governance values, and socio-economic aspirations of the Commonwealth. The conference will run under the theme, Adoption, Engagement, and Evolution of Parliaments in a Rapidly Changing Commonwealth. Discussions will focus on climate change, innovations in parliaments, persons with disabilities, 
youth, urbanization, sexual harassment, and separation of powers, among other topics. More than a thousand delegates from 54 countries are expected, and this will be an opportunity for Ugandans in the social and economic sectors to benefit by providing their services. Follow us on the hashtag 64CPC2019 and on Facebook at 64th Commonwealth Parliamentary Conference. This message is brought to you by the Clock to Parliament. Commission has released guidelines for countrywide reorganization of polling stations from 2nd to 14th September in preparation for 2020-2021 general elections to enable voters conveniently cast their votes. Every parish, ward, and electoral area must have at least one polling station. Where no polling station exists in a newly created parish or ward, at least one polling station must be recommended by the stakeholders in the area. The returning officer must ensure that each electoral area at sub-county level is demarcated and approved by the commission. Sub-county supervisors shall oversee the reorganization exercise. In case of parish, village, or electoral areas at sub-county without polling stations, meetings will take place at the mother parish where current polling stations are located. For details, call 0312-211-050. Announced by the Uganda Electro Commission. Does heartburn stop you from eating the things you love? Eating too fast, alcohol or spicy food can trigger acidity, heartburn, indigestion or flatulence. Your best bet is Better Cool. Better Cool works fast to relieve acidity, heartburn and indigestion. Trust Better Cool. Enjoy life. If symptoms persist, seek medical advice. Welcome back from that break, and this is News Tonight here on UBC TV. Let's talk business now. The Minister for Finance, Planning and Economic Development, Matia Kaseja, has unveiled the Deposit Protection Fund of Uganda. And as Wadulo Mark Anul now reports, the fund is an assurance that customers of commercial banks and other deposit-taking institutions are compensated to a maximum of 10 million shillings if it closed business. Government has decided to increase the deposit insurance paid by deposit-taking institutions like banks from 3 million shillings to 10 million shillings. It is to help create confidence in your financial system, allow that people will be running out from keeping money in the banks. And you know that is not good running. It's not, we don't do that in, in a, a, an a, a economy that is being run in a modern way. People must put money not under the mattresses, not under, in the ports, money should be kept in banks. The Deposit Protection Fund of Uganda is a legal entity created by the government of Uganda under the Financial Institution Act of 2004, whose mandate is to act as a deposit insurance scheme for customers. It is a commitment by government that should a bank in the financial system fail, there is a fallback position. They are guaranteed to reimburse or to pay the depositors a minimum amount of 10 million per account. According to the central bank, starting July 2019, there are 12 million active bank accounts registered under various commercial banks in Uganda. And the Deposit Protection Fund is covering 11.2 million so far. The fund currently is approximately 650 billion shillings in terms of uh, absolute figures. And this is an increase from 480 billion in 2017 when we took charge of the fund as a separate uh, legal entity. In order to ensure safety and liquidity, the collected premiums are invested in government of Uganda's treasury instrument. Reporting for UBC, Wadulo Makan. <laughs> Thank you.
Sports News now, and we look at uh, basketball, where after a long wait, Federation of Uganda Basketball Association has confirmed playoff dates for the 2019 season. Now, that session of the league will start on September the 20th with a quarter-final matchups that will be played on a best-of-three basis. In the men's category, Uganda Christian University Canons play Kampala Capture City Authority. Reigning champions, the City Oilers, date DJ University, and JKL faces power while Warriors entertain Kampala International University Titans. Among the ladies, it's reigning champions JKL against Uganda Matters Ravens, KCC Leopards, Negotiate Angels Basketball Club, UCU Lady Cannons tussle A1 Challenge with the university derby between KIU and Nkumba completing the fixture, the fixture list. Mouth-watering fixtures there in as far as basketball is concerned. And we've almost come to the end of news tonight. But uh, before we leave you, let's have a quick reminder of our top stories. Ban on sugarcane export to Kenya. Members of parliament blocked from accessing alleged illegal detention centers. Elsewhere in the world, Parliament suspension begins as Johnson's election bid fails. And in sports, FUBA sets playoff date. And that brings us to the end of this bulletin. Evening, Thank you so will. much for having kept us company. On sign language, it has been Mughalu Mohammed. And I am Edward Rukidi Kijanangumba. Our next bulletin comes your way at 10 p.m., where I will be joined with by Patricia Lukoma. But I'll leave you with the weather forecast for tomorrow with uh, Ali Tuvera. Juliet, see you then. Good evening. We woke up to a morning of light rains in Kampala and many different parts of our country. Later, had a heavy downpour across the different parts of our country. This is the weather report from Uganda National Meteorological Authority. I'm Ali Tuvera, Juliet. From the rainfall report we received by 9 a.m. this morning, Gulu reported 5.2 millimeters, Kampala 1.4, whereas Entebbe reported 1.1 millimeters. And this is attributed to what we are seeing on our satellite image, that the ITCZ is still over our country, and both arms are contributing to the wet activities we are experiencing, and we expect these to continue for the next days. For tomorrow morning, we are expecting light rains for areas around Lake Victoria Basin and some parts in the central. For Soroti, we are expecting heavy showers elsewhere. Sunny intervals will prevail. Later in the afternoon, we are expecting a wet weather pickup around Lake Victoria Basin, the central and the western stretch. Sunny intervals for the rest of the parts. So go ready with your umbrellas as you're moving out of your homes. Maximum temperatures will rise up to 28 degrees centigrade for the Karamoja region. Around Lake Victoria Basin, we are expecting a range of 26 to 28 degrees centigrade. For Kabale Highlands, a maximum of 23 is expected. Beyond Uganda, we are expecting Juba to have sunny intervals at a maximum of 32 degrees centigrade. Sunny conditions for Mumbai and Cairo, whereas rains are expected in Nairobi and Mexico at a maximum of 25 in Mexico. Thank you for keeping us company. Don't hesitate to visit our website as it is well displayed on your screen. Have a blessed night. Put you by UCC. Celebrating 20 years of achievements.